If you're publishing a Power BI report and it may end up being used as a data source for another Power BI report or for analyzing Excel, for example, you may want to be careful about using filters. I'll show you the problem. Let's go. I've got a report that I built, very simple, and by department, the grand total of FTE is 60. I've published this report, and I'll just show you, here it is in the browser, in my YouTube demos workspace. And I've given access to somebody else, or even myself, to build another report off this. And you can do that in Excel or Power BI. Let me show you the Power BI way. You can go get data from a Power BI data set and connect up to it. So if I just sort this by this one I just loaded and go create, I'm now connecting to that data source sitting in the cloud. So you've got this single source of truth for all your reports and you don't have to recreate your measures and your tables and your power queries. It's just there waiting for you to build a, a slightly different report off it. And here we go. So if I click on my card visual, and then I just go to my staff data and tick my FTE measure, I should get 60 because that was in my other report. But I actually get 65. So if I just minimize this a second. So here's my 60 versus 65. And I can even copy between the reports. So here's my 60, control C from report the original, go over here, control V. Sixty-five. Well let's copy this visual. Control C Control V. Ah, oh, this item X. What is this? Okay, so sneakily in here in the filter pane, I or someone else has filtered out department X at the report level or at the page level. And because there's no way of me telling that in the connected report, I could easily just miss something. So if you're ever trying to remove things in the filter, just be really wary about that. I can also demonstrate this in Excel. So in the insiders channel um, for Excel and on the current channel currently, um, it's under get data from Power BI. And you need a Power BI Pro license currently to connect to this. Things may change, so always check on the documentation about what's available where. And then if I search in here for my workspace called YouTube, here we go, here's all my data sets available. If I click on it, it's now connecting to that live data set. And this is great because you can have a refreshable data set in Power BI and all your reports are being built off this centralized view. And if I click FTE, I get 65. And if I do it by department, you'll see that the X comes through. So what do you do? Um, well, I haven't got a great answer for this other than try and avoid the filters in the first place. But my approach, and I'd be interested to hear what other people think, would be sort of three-pronged attack, really. In your original report, if you don't need Department X, okay, if, if it's not required for your report, then get rid of it at the Power Query stage. Filter it out using transform data so that it's not even there. And then everything will be consistent. Then the option, second option really, is rather than hard coding your filters into this filter panel, put the filters into your DAX measure. So if I come into my staff and I actually show you the um, view, the hidden ones, I've hidden a couple of ones here. Here's one option. So let me just show you this DAX formula. So here we have the option of you know, use a calculate function to put the filter in there. 
because then that measure, when it's using other reports, will have the filter in it. And then the other option, where you don't really want to be hard coding this X in, especially if there's more than one of these things and it could change and it needs a bit more of a, a nice clear audit trail, would be to include um, a table. It actually lists the department and then whether it's included or excluded. So X has a, a zero against it, for example. That table then is used and referenced in your uh, DAX measure. So if I go back and click on the option two and go over here, so where the department table sort of flag column equals one. So it's only going to include those. So then you've got a nice clearer audit trail of exactly what you're flagging in and flagging out. So those are the two options. I'd like to know what other people would use. Um, what What's the best practice? What should we advise people to do in this scenario? Um, another option I sort of thought of would be maybe, maybe you want some sort of little table that has a notes in it. So you could have this sort of thing with a, a little manually entered table that has some, you know, useful little descriptions in it about what, what has happened. So then let's say somebody is in another report. They could just maybe, you know, drop this little explanation and have a look. At least it would give them a little list of, you know, the comments that you, the original model builder has. This would probably, you know, be a last resort, but it might be a useful way of just, you know, informing people, giving them some hints, giving them some advice. There could even be links in here to some useful documentation. Okay, let me know what you think. What would you do? What would you advise? Um, if you want to stay up to date with my videos, subscribe and let me know what you think. Leave me a comment and I will catch you later.